Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're gonna go over how to build a song section by section using Auto Punch. In a recent comment on one of my videos, someone had a very unique situation, but what they were really asking was how to use Auto Punch to build different sections of the song. Maybe you would like to keep a couple bars, but right in the middle you wanna replace something, but you don't wanna to touch the stuff at the end. Let's dive into the DIW and take a better look at using Auto Punch. Okay, so here we are inside of our session and it is bare bones. It's just a guitar, but I wanna show you what's actually happening here. Uh, I just have two bars of lead in so that I could hear the click track when I was recording this. And it's just a very simple chord structure that's going through. And I've gone ahead and actually already marked where I purposely played the wrong chords. This way we can highlight this area with auto punch and I'll show you how to do that. But first and foremost, Let's take a listen. you could see that from bars 11 all the way up until bar 15, these are the wrong chords. They're not in the right key, they're not played well, and I just wanna replace this. And instead of having to retrack the entire thing, I just wanna go in and replace these few bars. So the best way to approach this is by using auto punch. And here's how you would go ahead and set it up. First thing you're gonna wanna do is actually make sure that auto punch is on. And if you don't already have it on, you can find it down here next to the metronome setup section. And it'll be this bottom button here. Or the keyboard shortcut for it will be I on your keyboard. It'll light up red and you know it's activated. Next, we need to tell Studio One what area we actually want to address with auto punch. We want to tell it when to punch in. And in this instance, we also want to tell it when to punch out. To do that, you just drag your loop selection. So I know that these four bars are my problem area. And I wanna be able to re-record just these few bars. I don't wanna to touch anything before, and I don't wanna to touch anything after. One thing to take note is when you're using auto punch, you don't get the opportunity to use pre-roll in your punch in methods. If I come down here and click this dot or use the keyboard shortcut of shift and C, it disables auto punch and turns the pre-count on. So if I go ahead and hit record now, it would just give me a count in for these measures. Also, if you use something like pre-roll, this doesn't tell Studio One when you actually want to come out or punch out of your recording process. So that's why we'll switch to auto punch. And we'll just go ahead and manually give ourselves two bars of lead in. I moved my playhead over, and now when I arm this track, hit record, it will play what's there, and then we can match ourselves on the guitar and replace the chords for the correct ones. Let's do that right now. Hang on just a second. So here we go. We're two bars out. We're gonna punch in on bar 11 and it'll automatically take us out at bar 15. And hopefully we play the right chords the right way and in the right time. Just gonna hit C on my keyboard to turn the click track on and make sure that I'm hearing everything. Don't worry, I'm not gonna put the click track in your ear. You'll just see me playing guitar. And there we go. I continued playing after the record had stopped but it didn't go over the event we already had. It just stopped at bar 15 because we've made the selection that this is where I want to stop recording. Okay, so you've punched in your part, but maybe your timing was ever so off and maybe you were either ahead of the beat or behind the beat. Even though you're using auto punch and you just recorded this section, Studio One was listening the whole time. And you can actually use slip editing with this new event. So. On my keyboard, I'm gonna hold down Command and Option. On a PC, that will be Control and Alt. Hold these two down, you'll get this tool, and now I can adjust the audio event around inside the event, 
without changing anything but the timing. Now, you may be wondering if there's a way to highlight different sections or different bars within the area that you need to punch in. Maybe bars 7 and 8 need to get punched in. You want to leave bar 9, and then you want to punch in bar 10 and 11. Well, you'll have to do two processes to do this because you're only allowed one loop area selection at a time. So there you go. It's a better explanation of what's happening with auto punch. You're telling Studio One the area that you want to punch in and then be able to punch out of. And like we said before, you can use this to build your song. If you want to go, here's the intro, then I want to go into the verse, then I want to go into a chorus. Actually, I need to go back to the verse, redo that, but I don't want to touch anything else. You can use auto punch to highlight the area that you need to re-record and then move on from there. Studio One will know with auto punch when you want to start and stop your recording. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.